You're listening to Shoe In, covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, from sneakers to heels, loafers to slippers, and every type of shoe in between. Brought to you by the FDRA, the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion. Helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. Hey, folks, we are uh, recording this at Fannie. Um, the great thing about Fannie, Matt, is yeah. the ability to sit down with multiple executives across the week and talk to them about what they're seeing in the marketplace yeah. and um, seeing in terms of operations and the dynamic thing about the footwear industry is everybody does it a little bit differently. Right. Um, and we kind of hear these conversations. And this is, again, we've said this before, but we started this show basically because we were at trade shows having dynamic conversations about life, about yeah. family, and yep. about footwear. And we thought, gosh, these are so good. We, we really need to spread this out so other people across the industry can hear this think a little bit differently about what they're doing um, in their marketplace and with their product um, in order to strengthen the industry. So this is another one of those fantastic conversations yep. that you're, everybody's going to listen to. It. There we go. I did declare it. I, I, I do declare. <laughs> I do declare. <laughs> <laughs> so tee it up for us. Who, who do we have today that's going to blow our minds? We have Brendan Hoffman, who's the president CEO of Wolverine Worldwide. Brendan, Welcome to the Shoe and Show. It's your first time with us. We're super glad that you're here. Wolverine is a is an amazing company with a rich history and a ton of brands. So you're we're here in New York, your hometown. How's the show been for you? How how busy are you guys? Are you guys rock and rolling? It seems to be the case, but how are things yeah. going? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm a little intimidated here. But, <laughs> no, uh, oh, we're you easy. Prof- you professionals. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 great to see New York in the in almost like I remember it, right? You know? I mean, with, with tons of people, I was walking down um, through Times Square last night and I, I don't remember it ever being so crowded. Right. I mean, mm. It was, it was just, you know, you had to hang on to your wallet and your phone. So, <laughs> you know, after the last couple of years, that was nice to see, um, you know, and, and, and more importantly, you know, the show's going great. I mean, we're seeing a ton of traffic up, up in our showroom with our brands, you know, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's been a great week so far, and and obviously a lot of different things everyone's dealing with. But uh, it's good to see everyone back and the enthusiasm. Um, obviously, the the gala on Monday night was terrific. Yeah. And the meeting yesterday just to get people back together and uh, being able to exchange ideas, uh, you know, off of Zoom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been at Wolverine for for quite some time, but you've recently taken the helm as president and CEO. Talk to me about your priorities in twenty two and as you move into twenty three. As, as someone who's been in the industry a long time, apparel and footwear, you're, you're, you've come to this, this historic company, right? A hundred years or more. And so you look at it and say, what do we need to do to take a, take us to the next level? What are some of those things? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I've been, so I've been here a year and a half and, and Blake and I officially transitioned about six months ago, the beginning of the year. And so it was a good period of time to quickly immerse myself in the company and, mm-hmm. and the footwear industry. You know, I've, I've, I've been involved on the, uh, on the periphery with uh, my department store experience, but never immersed quite like this. So it was a great uh, apprenticeship for a year and and excited about what the future holds for us at Wolverine, having all these great brands and, and uh, you know, being able to play in a lot of different lanes. So I think, you know, for us, uh, like everyone else, the immediacy is just dealing with the, the macro problems mm-hmm. that um, – are ever changing and um, and trying to make sure we navigate it better than most and and uh, and learn and really emerge from this a company that operates more efficiently and and uh, more productively. So I think we're we're well on our way to doing that. I think in terms of the priorities longer term for us, you know, that's uh, that's a process we're going through now and and trying to see um, how we can make sure that the center we call them the centers of excellence you know mm-hmm. that we have the opportunity to form because we have all these brands mm-hmm. uh, work to unlock the power of the individual brands right. rather than um, uh, hamper their entrepreneur kind of mindset or their creativity and and, and it's hard to do having been in matrix organizations before mm-hmm. you know it's it's hard to know exactly where where those lines belong and where the decision rights belong and so that's kind of the process we're going through now, you know, led by the brands and the business units and the regions to try to figure out how we can best um, uh, thread that needle. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, I think during COVID, 
well, we said this ad nauseum, but how much digital and how important it was, but not just the channeling, but just the communication lines and the understanding of consumers at this point. How do you, um, how do you, you know, from a, a hundred year old company, how do you get into more of the technology and more of the, the digital space to understand your customer better? Um, is it easy to do that? Is it complicated to do that? Do you know more about your customer now than you did five years ago? What's the, what's kind of the future of, of this consumer engagement from companies like yours? Yeah, well, um, I think all of the above. We certainly know our customer better now than we did five years ago. I mean, there's just there, there, there's no substitute for owning the customer information. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we we love our wholesale you know business. We're a wholesale you know legacy company, mm-hmm. and that will always be an enormous part of. Uh, of our channel mix, but you, for obvious reasons, don't get the same customer data you right. get when you're when when you're dealing through somebody else. So I think it's been invaluable to us as our penetration of direct to consumer, and for us, it's really just e-commerce because we don't mm-hmm. have any full price stores. We have some outlets, um, and I think it's helping us inform uh, a lot of the decision making we make in bringing product to market mm. because we're getting real time, unfiltered response from the customer that the uh, product team can now use to help inform their decisions. Uh, it's complicated right now because as as is the news of the day or the week or the month, the right. consumer sentiment is, is changing right. at a pace we've never seen before. And, you know, other the biggest of the retailers are struggling with that right now. So mm-hmm. I think that's, that's an added nuance. But, you know, again, as I said earlier, you know, using uh, what we're going through now to come out of this a better company, I think – Understanding our customer, understanding how to use the data we get from our customer, right. uh, investing in the tools to modernize uh, Wolverine, both from what the customer sees, but also what the customer doesn't see, mm. is a big part of this journey that uh, that we're really just starting. Yeah. You have a portfolio of brands, right? So you're diversified from a brand perspective. You have Merrill and Saucony and, and Sperry and Cat and Hush Puppies and Wolverine. Talk about how... Each of those have, some of them have seasonality, some are up while others are down. How do you kind of leverage and work through a process where you have this multitude of brands, you call it a matrix organization, um, and some of them might weather recession better than others. Some, when work is up, then something else might be down. How do you approach that entire landscape of having so many brands? Well, I, I, you know, I th- that, that's part of the process we're going through now. So we said at our last earnings call, we've engaged Boston Consulting Group to kind of accelerate this kind of corporate strategy thinking. And I think it goes mm-hmm. right to that, Matt. It's like, how, how do we want to define ourselves going forward? What lanes do we want to play in? So one thing we did was we, we created a uh, work boot brand group. Mm -hmm. So we've consolidated uh, Wolverine Cat uh, uh, under Tom Kennedy, along with Bates and High Test and Harley. And I think just that sort of thinking has allowed us to um, uh, become more efficient, think about the boot business a little more holistically. Um, Yes, the end consumer doesn't know that the brands are related, but we can be smarter about the way we we balance some of the seasonality, some of the channel mix changes. And so I think now looking at the other brands to figure out how we we do that as well. Um, You know, currently we kind of segment ourselves as the Boston group and the Michigan group. And I'm not sure in the hybrid world we're living in, that's that's so important anymore as opposed to figuring out, you know, what sort of end customer use lanes we're in, you know, outdoor work, performance. And I think by doing that, as we go through the process, that will help us uh, identify what you're describing, which is using the power of the portfolio uh, to both weather different storms, so to speak, mm-hmm. or seasonality, but also exploit uh, where the opportunities are. Right. That makes sense. Sweaty Betty, what, talk about that. Was that a new opportunity that emerged? What's the thinking behind the Sweaty Betty acquisition? Yeah, well, it goes back to a little bit of what you, uh, was just asked in terms of they are a direct-to-consumer brand. They mm-hmm. understand how to use this data. They mm-hmm. understand how to talk to their consumers. So I, sh- I, I meant to mention that in the last question was we're hoping to have them imprint on us as much as we <laughs> imprint on them. So, mm-hmm. you know, in the past when we've done uh, acquisitions, they've you know often been carve-outs or other shoe brands where it was just natural to pipe them into our ecosystem and, mm-hmm. and kind of immerse them in the, in, in Wolverine, uh, the Wolverine culture. I think here there's an element to that. There's certainly things we, we bring to Sweaty Betty by our size, our international relationships, our, um, you know, but there's so much they can bring to us on this knowing the consumer, uh, data mining, a younger, you know, more modern mm-hmm. company. So, it's really been a great um, first year with them, kind of learning and sharing with Julia Strauss, our CEO there and her team, and 
uh, the back and forth. And, and um, you know, what I mentioned earlier about uh, taking the portfolio of brands, figuring out where the center of excellence is and where the brands have their own autonomy. So this is kind of unique because we have a, a fully um, autonomous brand that we bought mm-hmm. that we're pipe- they're leaning in to pipe into certain things that we offer that they couldn't do on their own. Mm-hmm. And it's probably a good model for how certainly our bigger brands need to be structured in order to let them grow as big as they can be, but also you know recognizing that there's um, there's efficiencies we bring as part of the corporation. The 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 uh, you know uh, logic behind it was a lot of what I just said, but also bringing apparel into our company. Mm-hmm. You know we've we've struggled for years, for decades, to try right. and launch an apparel business uh, across our brands, uh, and I think it's important, particularly for our bigger brands, as we go more direct to consumer. Uh, you need to offer more than just one category in order to fully engage the customer. So it's hard right. if you're just talking about shoes to to email a customer who just bought shoes about another pair of shoes. Mm-hmm. You know, in my department store days, I didn't realize how spoiled I was in the e-commerce side because we knew if they bought shoes, the next thing they should buy is handbags. And if they bought mm-hmm. handbags, the next thing they should buy is cosmetics. And so we could keep that conversation going without being repetitive. And so now coming to... Uh, you know, a predominantly shoe business, I, I realize how hard it is to keep that engagement going. And whether it's through the digital landscape or whether we open up some brick and mortar stores, you know, our bigger brands need to have more categories that they play in, apparel mm-hmm. being one, accessories. And so, you know, I think acquiring a company like Sweaty Betty, that that's their core product, right. uh, you know, hopefully will uh, accelerate that. And likewise, um, as one of Sweaty Betty's competitors just did launch shoes, you know, mm-hmm. we think there's a great opportunity for mm. Sweaty Betty, you know, to bring in shoes and some of the other things we do well. Very interesting. Uh, I do want to ask really quickly about talent. Um, in the marketplace today, we see, you know, a lot of hiring. Um, and in some ways, it's slowing a little bit because of, you know, recession fears. So you see like Netflix cutting. So it's different segments are cutting sure. based on where they are in the marketplace and everything. But, you know, we also see in, in apparel, like, you know, Walmart's offering tuition assistance. And so all the, you know, how do you, in this landscape, look at talent and talent retention and, and try to manage that as a large company? And now <laughs> with remote, right? You just said the Michigan side and the Boston side, that doesn't really matter anymore. I mean, you could have a, some designer in Nevada at this point, right? Yeah. It probably wouldn't matter that much if they're talented. So how do you, as a corporation, kind of change that mindset and and try to lean into that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think the two most important things we have as a company are our brands and our people. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I, somebody asked me at a college reunion how I spend, you know, my time. A lot of it's around culture. Mm-hmm. And the culture mm-hmm. is about making sure, you know, yes, compensation and money, and mm-hmm. those are all top of mind for everybody. Right, but right. beyond that, you know, we have to win in other things we can do for um for our employees, and that's uh, you know creating a culture that where they want to be in the office, right. you know, and and I uh, um, you know speaking a lot about this lately, or thinking a lot about this lately, especially uh, given our unique situation that we our headquarters in Rockford, Grand Rapids, Michigan, but we have another you know big office in Boston and Waltham, and then we obviously have London offices around the world. Mm-hmm. So in Rockford, which is a rural campus, you know you've been there, Matt. You yep. know it, it, we have all these amenities. You know we have a gym that's like a mm-hmm. lifetime fitness. We have mm-hmm. daycare, doggy mm-hmm. daycare. <laughs> You know, three dollars. You know, at the cafeteria, you can eat all you want, and so and the commute's not all that long. So it's right. been easier to get in, and so those sorts of amenities I think help retain people. Mm. In our uh, Waltham office, it's more of a suburban office park. So we, while we have some of those same things, it's it's not nearly as uh, uh, rolled out because mm. of space constraints. Mm. So thinking a lot about what do we do for that office in order to make people. Um, want this to be their place of choice to work. And then, as I mentioned, we have a campus in London, we have a campus in in, in Chile, in in Hong Kong. So that's very much top of mind. I mean, I feel like my title should be chief uh, cultural officer. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So much of, uh, you know, what I think we need to do as a company, but, you know, in the broader, you know, industry is just think about what you're saying. Make sure we're not losing losing talent for the wrong reasons. Right. I mean, if somebody's going to pay that much more at a Netflix or something, there's there's only so much we can do. That's right. Mm-hmm. Sure. But uh, I don't want to lose them for the wrong reasons. Yeah. So. Well, well, think about brand identity, right? If so many brands, it goes back to that diversification issue um, and maybe the consolidation around work and more synergist, synergistic approach to that. But you, there's different cultures based on different types of different brands. And 
to try to manage that seems like a, a interesting task, to say the least. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, my brand presidents, you know, we have great brand leadership or or, or uh, functional leadership or regional leadership. I mean, that's that's their role as well, and they mm-hmm. do a great job. You know, yeah. as, as as you know, me setting the at, at the very top for the Wolverine culture, and then having the brands. Um, uh, that filter down to the brands, but through their own identities. So you're right. right. You know, Merrill stands for something different than mm-hmm. uh, than Bates does. And right. so, again, I think the brands have done a great job uh, leaning in on that. You know, I'm really proud of the leadership team we have and how they are embracing the cultural changes we need to attract. And, and I say all the time, so many of my decisions are about, is it going to attract or retain talent? Right. right. You know, mm-hmm. when we think about hybrid work, when we think about all these different things yeah. along the way, it's, it's, it's through that lens. Yeah. Well, you'll appreciate this because last night I was hounding our president and CEO of FDRA Fanny to really, um, <laughs> my feet are killing me during Fanny walking around in these dress shoes. Um, and I see a lot of more people wearing cat. Like, so now I'm starting to be like, Oh, I can get into it too. But I was like, you know what would really retain me at FDRA is a foot massage when I get back home. <laughs> so we're, we're applying it. We're allowing all staff to get foot massage right. when they get back. Yep. Uh, well, I, 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 my recommendation, we wear, wear Wolverine brand. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and I'm not going to mention who you're wearing yeah. today. Some would be good. But, right? uh, you know, we can we can we can help you with. All that. right, that sounds good. Um, as we wrap it up, I've got a question for you in this environment. It's more of like an MBA question, not so much on business specific. But I feel like you know, as people go into business, they're trained to think about strategy, right? Setting north stars and, and creating these corporate you know roadmaps to get to certain places. Are we at the point where like this? And I know it's not exactly static in the real world, right? You said something and you constantly change and adjust and, and tack in different ways. But I feel like we're no longer in this static strategy world where we set this kind of roadmap and now it's like all over the place. So how, when you look at strategy, how fluid does it have to be? I mean, we, we usually talk in like three-year outlays of things. Are we in three-month outlays of strategy? How do you look at that now as a as a yeah. leader of a company? Well, I, I think, you know, a couple different things. First of all, I say North Star North Star all the time. So yeah. I think that's a great way. We need to know what our North Star is. Right. I mean, we, we were at the Nordstrom's uh, training room yesterday mm-hmm. and you saw their vision. And, yep. I mean, you know, and it rings true with what you know about Nordstrom. So I do think there is an element of you have to, you have to know where you're trying to get to right. and, and, and um, you know, make sure everyone's unified on that. But then, um, especially in today's world, you're right, it's very fluid. So anything we put on paper is going to be outdated the next day. So we have to be, <laughs> we have to be agile. I mean, I think that's, you know, being in e-commerce for 20 years now, that's what I learned that I take with me and trying to bring to Wolverine is just test and learn, test yeah, and yeah, learn, yeah. be agile. Right, and, right. and and so, yeah, we're, we're going to put some stakes in the ground, but we're also going to have to recognize, you know, be agile enough to move and evolve as, as different world events happen. And so, um, you know, I was I was reminded by uh, by my father that my high school quote was uh, about speak uh, speak what you think today in hard words, and then speak again, speak what you think tomorrow in hard words again, even if they contradict that. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's Wal- Ralph Waldo Emerson mm-hmm. or something, uh, but that's why a Chevy Chase quote, I think. But, uh, <laughs> my, one but, of those great but, thinkers. But uh, <laughs> but but so I, I I brought that up to the team. Like this is how I've kind of thought. You know, my entire life is. We can't be afraid to make mistakes. We can't mm-hmm. be afraid to fail. We got to fail quickly, and it's part of this setting mm, right, a strategy, right. and then recognizing as it needs to be tweaked and, and refreshed. So that's part of the like process that. that we're going through now. Fail yeah. quickly. It's very entrepreneurial. Yeah. Right. All I do is fail, and then <laughs> spin it. Spin it that it was a success. Exactly. You know, well, you are from DC, so that's just how it works, right? <laughs> exactly right. Well, we appreciate you stopping by. We know yeah, you're thanks, super Brendan. busy. Um, hopefully, uh, the showroom traffic continues all week and, uh, and then beyond because we know too, you know, the, the trade shows are great cause it gets people together, but we know there's people going to your headquarters all the time. And so this constant, the business mm-hmm. is constantly, you know, it's in flux start, start, and, and starting to happen again. It's good yeah. to see people getting yeah. out and about. Hopefully we can keep it that way. Awesome. Yeah, same. Yeah. Well, folks, this is a shoe and show. Uh, we're covering the ins and outs of the footwear industry. You just heard another great conversation about all things footwear. Um, you can you know find us anywhere podcasts are 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 pushed out. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc. Shoeandshow.com is our website. It's got our entire catalog of more than three hundred. We're like at three thirty. Three thirty. Three it schools out three thirty. Excellent. Exactly. Uh, so you can go there and find our entire catalog and and go back and listen to other great conversations we've had. Also, 
uh, as your footwear industries association, please drop us a note on the main page at the bottom left is a little icon as a voice note. You can click on that. You can leave us a voice message and we'll get that. Um, you can tell us what you liked about our show. You can, it, hopefully it's everything. You can tell us if you have uh, ideas for a guest or topics you want to hear from this show is for the industry to strengthen it. And, uh, and that's where we are trying to serve the industry in all things operations side. And now, with the marketplace. So there you go. I will remind people, you know, this was recorded at Fannie in June and August. We will be back we're first back, week baby. of August. Yep. Uh, so we're excited to, uh, to see you there. Um, and we'll be having a cocktail party and we hope, we hope you'll join us for that. And in the meantime, we hope you'll join us next Monday for the next drop of shoe and show. And until that time, be safe, be well, and shoe is out. Shoe has been brought to you by the FDRA the Footwear Industries Association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion, helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. For information about FDRA, visit FDRA.org.